Hello everyone, I am Maya McNeil and I am a part of the Mental Health Advisory Board. I am also the Youth Liaison for Boston City Councilor Julia Mejia's office and today we are breaking down the BPS budget. So my first question to you all is, through this pandemic, what do you think that schools can allocate their money for, for services as far as their students? Teachers need help and so do the students. So both counseling for or therapy for teachers and for the students that they're working for or helping. For me, I don't like standardized testing either. I just think it's unnecessary. I just think that puts a lot of unnecessary stress and it's, it's just unneeded. We have enough stress throughout the year. I just think having standardized testing just puts too much pressure on students. Personally, I think mental health is important because it affects you mentally and physically. And if you have bad mental health, then you can't really be trying to constantly get your grades up when you're pressured to have A plus or B minus. And I think we should put um, putting it to nurses at school. We can use counseling and social workers more. Um, for counseling for students, there's everyday life that they go through and they need help with that. And for my school, I think more for, for, for forms of therapy and tutoring in my school would be really helpful, especially since a lot of the students are going through many, many hard things at our, specifically our school. So I think therapy would be a good way for us to really express our feelings. I think that we should advocate more on what mental health really means and how to have better mental awareness. How much money will be going into creating a better mental health for creating a better mental health space for schools and how much will be going to each school. Going to make sure that we implement this type of curriculum in all our schools, not just when they want to, when it's needed for all of our students, so that that way they are coming to school with a healthy mindset and ready to learn. And not schools having a very bad look from the outside of looking in already. That was definitely me. Dropping out of that school, not wanting to be in school at all, then having a second chance to come here. I, um, I had the mindset thinking that the school wasn't really going to do much for me. And I want to say day and evening was basically a school that gave me that second chance I needed to push through with everything I wanted to do. Because that, that all the school I was at I didn't really care much about anything. I attended an exam school. The students say they have no idea what they want to do with themselves and they don't feel like they're getting the education that they need because it's like fast paced, fast paced, fast paced. You have to go on this level, you're at this level, you're at this level. It's almost as if you're working as a robot. Here they don't grade you on A, B, C, D, or F. They do high, uh, competent and highly competent. So it's not just a school of, oh, where kids go after they're in trouble at their school. They get a reference here because they're not doing very well at their school. It's a school where people are genuinely doing what they gotta do to so get where they wanna be in life. I dropped out for a little bit, dealt with a lot of death, as you know. Now I'm here getting back to what I need to do and I feel like the school offered me more opportunities than any school I've ever attended. Told that I was like being transferred here, I cried because the reputation that I heard was like horrible. And then I kind of like gave it a shot and I feel like I'm doing a lot better than I was doing at EMK. So there's the stigma of negativity for alt-ed students. But as you guys witnessed, we are, you know, demonstrating a good population of kids and we are pushing those kids out with plans. The reality is, is districts traditionally here at Boston across the country do not invest in alt-ed students because their return is not the same as, as a student in a traditional school. As someone who's been in this work for more than 20 years, I think that's the hardest thing for me to hear, is that they are not investing in our kids because they don't matter when it comes to the data. Because it can't come from the top down. It has to come from the people who are gonna be most impacted by those decisions. Um, if we truly wish to see the transformative change that everyone claims that they wish to see. some time I don't want to come to school because like because when you're from the different country you come in here you don't have support you don't have assistance people don't have you why you before leave you always see you come to school you say you're a good student but you don't know your background you don't know your life 
Why do you leave when you leave school? For in my country, just learn English, but just some verbs and something. Mm -hmm. You don't want just speak it. And then in the school, just speak all English. And we was in the class in 12th way. I graduated this year. I just I be there this year. I have one year in the school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but in the first time, I don't understand anything the teacher say in the class. Mm -hmm. And then just, if I come to school, how I can put me in 12th way if you don't understand anything? Para nosotros como estudiantes es muy importante tener eso en cuenta, eh, poder tener como una ayuda de ustedes y decir como, bueno, puedo tener una beca, eh, ya que para muchos indocumentados es más duro este proceso. But also to help us outside of school, to have counselors that will guide us and not just make us feel little, to have teachers that will take the time to work one on one with you because you generally don't understand whether it's because of language, whether it's because of mental disability, whether it's because you can't hear, or whatever the story is. We have a school system que vale, tiene que vale la pena que van a trabajar contigo, da que the student is like this in school, but let's try and see if we can help them out outside of home. I've been a teacher 26 years. I have never felt adequately supported and funded in any of the projects that I've wanted to do, whether it be field trips, or a lot of the supplies I've bought myself. Um, we find a lot of students are needing that mental health support, especially this past couple years. We don't have a space where we can meet and get, have the gathering. And it is essential for a school in terms of building community to have that space. My vocation is automotive technology. My vocation is health assisting. So I'm in facilities. Uh, something that we could change is have more like after school programs. I feel like there should be a more like almost everyday tutoring thing so like kids can actually get the education they want. One thing I think we could change about the school is having other, other bilingual staff in the vocations because we do have we do have bilingual students who either don't speak English that much or just only speak either only speak English and speak another language. If one thing I could change about the school would be one on one help. Like if there could be like a designated period. What I would want for like prepare students for life as an adult as in like learning how to fill out taxes, learn about stuff like the four 401k, whatever that is, for retirement and stuff like that. Because I know there's many students who don't know about this stuff. But maybe help students with uh, going into the workforce. What I want the world to know about is that not every student here is bad or violent. Every A lot of students here just have a lot of problems and personal things that they need people to help them with. And this is why, like, um, this school, even though sometimes people have bad stigmas on us, but we actually are a really positive and well-knit community of a group because it gives a lot of other kids who are not, um, who don't have the outlet academically to go find things in their home. Because I remember um, joining the school freshman year and thinking, like, what am I going to do? And then I found a passion. And even though I might still have to go to college, with graduating from the school, I don't have to go to college. Like, I have things set up and planned ahead of me that are helpful just by going.